Here's an interesting map to take a look at. Lots of dots, lots of points showing up across this map. And there are many encompassing all of the D.C. region, the close-in suburbs. Folks, these are all the lightning strikes that have occurred over the course of one year in the D.C. metro from April 1st, 2023, all the way until April 4th, just a few days ago, 2024, 554,000 476 times lightning came from the sky and struck some object, some feature here in the region, in the D.C. region over the course of a year. I'm meteorologist and science teacher Ryan Miller. All of this data, thanks to our friends at Visala X Weather, who were able to share this data, and it's comprehensive. All of these little yellow dots, each strike over that one-year period across the region. That begs the question, are there spots in the region, is there some reason why areas across Prince George's County or the district or Montgomery County see more lightning strikes than others. We can use statistics to examine that question. The answer, short and simple, is yes. In the one year, there are some areas that actually experienced, from a statistical standpoint, more lightning strikes than others. That includes these areas in red across Prince George's County, moving into Anne Arundel County, into sections here of Prince George's from Calvert County down towards the south. And also, if you look towards Montgomery County, near Poolsville and some of the more rural areas of Montgomery County. Yes, statistically, there were more storms, but why? What's the reason? What caused these lightning strikes to occur? So we went and examined some of the data. All of these black dots that you see are all of the buildings, the structures in the D.C. metro, all 1,312,448 sheds, garages, houses, buildings, airplane hangars, all of them showing up with these dots. Is it that there location, these buildings, does that cause more lightning to occur? Well, the answer to that, short and simple, is no. And then I turned and looked at the idea, does land cover, what's on the surface of the earth, influence where we have lightning strikes? The answer to that is no. We have red areas on this map. These are the locations where land has been developed in some way, shape, or form. And the green areas are our trees. Do trees influence whether or not we see lightning strikes or elevation? And the answer, both of those answers, is no. So there are a couple of things to consider. We get lightning strikes primarily because of the concentration of a storm over a region. That is why certain locations see lightning strikes. It's not necessarily an environmental influence that's causing these strikes to occur. Nevertheless, in one year, 72 lightning strikes across the National Mall, stretching from the Capitol right through the mall and all the way to the Lincoln Memorial. Bottom line, if you're out and about, make sure if you hear thunder, there's lightning and you need to go and Side and wait at least 30 minutes to make sure you protect yourself and your loved ones from the dangers and the deadly dangers in some instances of lightning. Now, this is a taking a look here, and it's obviously dependent upon the size of the geography, but these are the numbers of lightning strikes that occurred over that course of one year. The bigger the area, the more lightning strikes. And if you look at that data and refine it and take a look at the density of the lightning strikes, these are the spots where we had lots of storms over that course of one year. And because of those storms, that's why lightning was more dense and struck the ground more times in these areas that are red and yellow. So one thing to consider, if you have and hear thunder, you need to head inside. And number two, as we went through the data, there is no environmental factor that we were able to uncover, whether it's trees, whether it's elevation, whether it's the height of the buildings. None of those determined whether or not there was more lightning strikes than others. But just an interesting way to look at data and collected data over the course of a year. I'm meteorologist and science teacher Ryan Miller.